Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I got to give a big giant apology to everybody. Um, I know I haven't posted a video in 8, 10, 12 days, something like that. And there's a reason. Um, I lost my internet. I lost my home phone. I lost my email. <clears throat> everything for about 10 days. Um, due to some credit card mishandling, might I say. Um, yeah, I had uh, tried to switch credit cards and blah, blah, blah. And I just made a mess of it. Um, so, my apologies. That's why I haven't responded to emails or whatever, but I did when they finally got my stuff back and um, the server company that I used, they were able to go back and get some, but not all, of my old emails. So I didn't, I, hopefully I, I'm going to address um, some of those, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I lost some of those emails. So, and I'm sorry I didn't get to reply to folks in the last video, but I, I couldn't. So, I'm sorry, I can't do it. But anyway, um, it's been so cold and snowing. We got down in the below zeros, you know, the negative temperatures and and so forth. I'm not whining. I understand this is Alaska. That happens. So, um, but yeah, it's been it's been cold, and it's just not, it's not so much the cold. The wind. Um, I open this either one of my garage doors, my shop doors, and it just blows snow and rain and whatever it happens to be doing. It's the wind. Kodiak is a windy place um, in the winter time. So um, anyway, enough babbling about that. Um, but I got to give some shout outs and I got to give some. Uh, replies to emails that I know were there that I did get back. Um, the first one I'm going to do is Mr. D. Roberts, Mr. Robert. I, I got one of your emails at least. You're looking for, I think, stuff like this. Um, now, each and every, here's three different 9915 whatever carbs or like this one's missing the, the top plate. Um, and it's got a serial number on there. Didn't match the one you gave me, which is par for the course. But this is how most of my parts are. They're just thrown in a, a carburetor bin. Um, it's got the plastic bowl. It's got the body. It doesn't have the plastic top. Um, what year it's off of, I don't know. I just know it's the plastic top models. This is a five screw. You can see these in six screws as well. This is the five screw. There's a service bulletin that tells you what to do to add that six screw, and I know Mr. Robert knows that. Um, again, if you look carefully in the throat, can you see me in there? You can see it's all salty and stuff. All my parts are. They're all salty units. They're all salty outboards. Um, there's one. And the reason why I point out these two is... Okay. Yeah. This one has dual nipples up front. And where's up front on this one? I think I got them right, don't I? Let's see. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Oh. So this one's got a couple nipples on this side. This one don't. This one's got it on the other side. Right there where that piece of hose is. Um, there was something else different about it. Oh, yeah. One of these. Yeah. No. Well, anyway, some of them have an adjustment screw in the plate. Oh, yeah, there it does. You see? See that screw sticking out there? 
into the top chambers so it can be adjusted. This one's blocked off. So you got to be a little more specific. I don't know if these will work for you. Um, yeah. So I've got them. If you just need the tops, I've got it. If you just need the bottoms, I've got it. If you want one with the adjuster on the top, I have it. If you want a body, I can send just a body. But like I said, my parts, the chance of me going out there and digging through these and finding the exact um, serial number of yours, it, it, it's probably doable, but it would take a long time. Um, so I, I can't go really by the serial numbers because, I, like I said, when I part out these motors, I have a section for the electronics, I have a section for the carburetors, fuel pumps, and, and pull start, and on and on. You understand? So, there's that one. So you're going to have to send me some emails. My email is up and working. If you have tried to send me emails in the last 8, 9, 10, 12 days, I probably didn't get it. So, there's that. Okay. I want to say a big shout out and thank you to a Mr. Chris Easel. He sent me some JPEGs and all and some encouraging words. And I, this time of year, could use it. And I sure thank you for that. And then I want to say a big thank you to Mr. Glenn Paul, the Outboard Tinkerer 62. I think I got that right. Yeah. The Outboard Tinkerer 62. He was kind enough as I was doing my little five and one half, um, 1963, I think. He saw that, the, and I mentioned in the video, that I had a busted recoil mount. And he was kind enough to send me not only the intake, which, here's where mine's broke right here. Snap. It's, yeah, I got it right side up. Snap, it's broke right there. So I was going to try, I, and I looked, I did not have this. I did not have this part. Um, I had one chance, I thought, because uh, I did have an old block out there. Uh, so I had one chance of having it, and I didn't have it. So I'm going to get this one painted all up. What do you guys think? Should I paint it? By just adding this one part and leaving it like this, I make it a Johnny Root. So depending on the comments, I'll paint it, and it'll be an Evan Root, or I'll leave it, and it'll be a Johnny Root. You guys let me know. <laughs> And uh, he also, Mr. Paul, sent me a gasket because he saw mine was falling off around there and all yucked up and corroded. I really appreciate it. The Outboard Tinkerer 62. Thank you. Um, and hopefully I'll get that in the next video. Um, and we'll get that on there. And then I don't know what I'm going to bring uh, in here on this. Next. i got so many that I want to modify and do it's the hard winter out there right now so i've only got one other customer's engine out of, out there this 30 horse is a customer's engine but as you can see we'll uh still got a, a couple little things we got to do on that so we'll get that hopefully wrapped up um and that's i got one more customer's engine out there but he don't even live on the island and I don't see him coming back here till probably the spring. So it's a yammy. It needs, I'm sure, carburetor cleaning and a fuel pump rebuild. Um, but I've got a 50 Merc that I don't have a, a hood, a bonnet for. And I thought that would be fun to bring in here and create some kind of bonnet out of the stuff I got out there. Out there. What do you think? Then... I'm not sure if you guys would be interested in a video on this because there's a lot of it on the tuber, but uh, I've got at least three, two and a half, three, um, Seagull Silver Series, I think, they're the tall ones. I've got two or three of those and I've got the parts and everything to certainly put one or two of them back together. Uh, but I realize there's not a lot of folks out there. Got a bunch of seagulls in a, in a garage or in a yard. So if you're interested in that, throw a comment. I've got them and I do want to do them at some point. 
but I could just show them in portions of videos, little snippets, the little snippets. Um, and then I've got some, I've got at least two or three Yamaha four stroke 9915s that have had the tillers broke off of them. Um, for, for a while there, Yamaha was sourcing its aluminum and stuff from China. A certain year period there, it's on the internet, I read about it, I can get that information to you. And I've had five, six, eight or more of these come in there. What it is, people use them as trolling motors on big boats. They have a big main engine and then that little Yamaha 1599 whatever sits there when they go to troll for salmon, they put it down. Well, it sits there all the time getting salt water splashed on it. Wherever the tiller happens to be, all that salt gets in there and it literally welds itself in that position and then they go to try and push it down or whatever, snap. Um, and then when I tell them what it costs for me to take that midsection tiller and all that off there, the cables and it. Anyway, I've got some out there. So, and I also have some what they call universal throttle shift cable things that I've collected over the years. I was thinking that could be fun. So um, then I've got a bunch of 25s, 35s that I need to get ready for the season coming up. So let me know if you got something you're particularly interested in seeing, and I probably got it out there. I got a little Mercury tiller shift. Yeah, tiller shift that uh, it pulls over. It was a donation. Um, I do a mod to put a shifter on those. I have a couple of those videos if you'd like to see that. So let me know what you want to see. Chances are I got it out there and we get to it. Right now we're going to get back on this 30 Johnson and see if we can't get this thing squared away. I've rambled enough. Let's get to it. All right, back on this Johnson 30. The first thing, now that we got spark, the first thing I'm going to do is put a set of these here babies. Champion L77JC4. Get them NGK plugs out of there. Some people are fans. And when it comes to the Asian motors, to the four-wheelers, three-wheelers, and the like, I'm a fan of them too, but not in OMC outboards. I prefer the Championis, Ioannistanis. I gap these at 30. Now we got to get this thing all situated. Shouldn't be that hard. Okay, so first thing I do is find the bottom nut to this and so forth. So let me find that bottom nut and whatever else I need and then I'll be back. Okay, I think I got everything kind of buttoned up in here. Ugh. Hopefully you can see it. I got everything ran pretty smooth and pretty good. Um, everything's grounded. So, now we got to put this recoil back on here. And I've had it soaking in my outboard tank for a couple of days so hopefully it'll be all lubed you can see it's a little bit wet there I'll wipe that off with the old rag then I'll just spray a little light penetrating okay I think I'm going to take a couple wines on it yet. I'll show you how to do that if you ain't familiar. If you look, somewhere, yeah. See that little nick, that little cutout right there? 
that's where this rope's gonna go I'll show you reach in with my needle nose and grab that rope so I'm gonna reach in get me enough slack just pull it around till that notch comes then I'm gonna put the rope in the notch like so that ropes in the notch then I'm gonna wind it you get the idea right Ugh. doubt you can see it but anyway hopefully you can I got the rope in the notch I already took one turn I'm gonna take one more probably right about there I ought to do it Now you got to remember when we started this motor he had that that jury rig choke on there so I don't know if there's going to be something wrong with this primer or not but at this point I'm going to say let's put her in the tank so let me get that set up means I gotta lift this group. Oh, I forgot to put the, the safety interlock back in. You gotta do that, I think. There we go. And we gotta undo the clamps. And then we gotta lift it up off of here. And get it ready for the tank. Don't worry, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Where you guys at? You guys at over here? Somewhere I think it's in there. I, yeah, it is. All right. Got to pull this big old heavy puppy back over here. I got it on this big tall stand, which I don't like. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> fuel holes. They hiding fuel holes. Hmm. Well, gas feels like it's going in. I can see it filling the uh, the filter here. Don't see no leaks. We can cross our fingers. Our feeners. Our feelers. Let's see if this thing's working. Oh yeah, it's working good. So I don't know why they had the homemade choke on there. But that primer worked good. So, let's see if we get anything. I can't remember if I shot Triflow in them cylinders before I put them champions in there or not. I'm gonna have to turn on my noise box. So I don't get any of that carbon fluoride or, or fluorocarbons. You know what I mean. Turn on the socket. Make sure she's in neutral. Give her a little bit of gas, I guess. Cross the feelers. You'll see what I see. 
end up rebuilding this recoil. Let's try it again. in my way. turns in and turns out and all that. I can't get to it with that filter there. That's about two right there.
on P. It's a bit on the nippy side. Okay, we got this 30 pretty squared away. It needs some cleaning and stuff like that, and I'm going to print that out to the owner of it. But it's good to go. It runs, it shifts, it pees. Idles pretty good. Um, so I think we got that squared away. I adjusted the carburetor. I did the recoil. Might need to do some more on old recoil. So that means... We can do the outboard dash. The outboard dance. All right. So we 
got this one squared away. Hopefully the weather's going to change. And I can actually open the door. So, this one's probably getting a little bit long. And, uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments. It's good to be back up and running here. Hopefully I can get some videos up. Hopefully the weather get better. And I will see you in the next one. And as always, you never, ever, ever know what's going to come into this little shop. That is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching.